In this lesson series, we'll try to situate ourselves in this great universe of ours. We'll begin with our home, the Earth, a rocky planet. And here we have our satellite moon. And the Earth, of course, is part of a solar system with the sun, the center, and the planet's orbit. And here we see the Earth and its moon. And of course, it takes a year for the Earth to make one revolution and the Earth is also spinning. And in 24 hours, it will make one rotation. And of course, the Moon is in orbit around the Earth. Now, if you uh, point a camera towards the North Star and do a long exposure, you can detect the rotation of the Earth. Here, are these little lines here are stars, but due to the Earth's rotation, they look like little lines. They're called star trails. Now the Earth is in orbit around our Sun. And these are pictures of our Sun. In fact, you can see some sunspots on the surface there. We're most familiar with the Sun. They create beautiful sunsets. But the Sun is a star. And in this diagram here, we see some of the neighboring stars. So we have our Sun. And all of these are nearby stars, the closest set of stars, the ones that we would see in the night sky. This kind of star over here on the left is the kind of star that a child would draw. But real stars are giant balls of gas, hydrogen and helium gas. And we'll learn later in the course that, that uh, these stars, because of what's happening inside the cores of stars where hydrogen is being fused into helium that releases light and energy and heat, but in addition, stars are factories for creating new kinds of elements. The smallest unit of elements are atoms, so stars are forging new kinds of atoms from hydrogen and helium gas. As it turns out then, the planets, the rocky planets that orbit stars like our sun, are made from materials that previous generation stars created. And so planets are made of star stuff. And of course, on Earth, life emerged on Earth. And if the planet is made of star stuff, so too are all the living things that emerged on planet Earth are also made, ultimately, of star stuff. Now our moon is familiar to us. We see it in the night sky, also the day sky. We can see the moon at different times. Now let's take a look at our moon. Here we see the moon as it was rising in Death Valley, California. Some clouds in front. And of course, humans have been to the moon. And you might be familiar with a famous picture taken in orbit around the moon called Earthrise. And this was taken in the late 60s, but it was sort of the an iconic photograph that sort of was present at the beginning of the environmental movement. And just the idea that all of us live on this island, this rocky island, and uh, it, it made people think that we really do have to be good stewards of our planet. But let's take a look at what's going on with the moon. Well, with the sun would be up top here, shining its rays on the Earth and the moon. And the moon then, of course, orbits the Earth. Now, as it progresses in its orbit around the Earth, we see the reflected light from the sun that bounces off the moon and into our eyes. So when the moon is between the Earth and the sun, that's a new moon. We often don't see the moon in the sky. As the moon begins its orbit around, we see uh, the reflected light off of just a sliver of the moon. And then as the moon makes it uh, 90 degrees here, we're going to see half of the moon. When the moon gets around to the other side, the entire face of the moon will be visible to us. So we'll see the full moon. And then it goes the other way as the moon returns back towards the position between the Earth and the Sun. We call that a new moon. We can see uh, why it is we see the different phases of the moon in the following animation. 
So let's take a look at this animation. Again, we have the sun here, the moon here, and the earth here. As the moon travels in its orbit, we'll see what the moon looks like as seen from earth. So notice here goes the moon, it's going to be traveling. And notice we're seeing just the crescent moon now due to the reflection of light off of the moon. As the moon gets halfway around here, we'll see the full moon. And then again, as the moon orbits, we're only seeing a fraction of the surface of the moon until it gets to its position again where it'll be a new moon, so we won't see the moon. Now, because of the plane of the orbit of the moon, most times when the moon is between the Earth and the sun, the moon's shadow does not fall on the Earth. Sometimes, however, the moon's shadow does fall on the Earth, and that is a solar eclipse. This is what a solar eclipse look like, looks like. This was uh, in 2017. Pictures were taken at, uh, in Idaho Falls. So here we have the sun, and here we see the encroaching moon. And when the moon uh, positions itself exactly in front of the sun, that is the moment of totality, a total solar eclipse. And this is what it looked like from a GoPro camera. Notice it's fairly dark. It's like twilight. But the sun is up in the sky, but the moon is in front of the sun. And this is a picture taken with a longer 300 millimeter lens. And here we see again the dark moon here, and we now just see the corona of the sun. In fact, we see some solar prominences here. So this is the, the moment of totality. Now let's take a look at some video from a recent solar eclipse in the country of Chile in 2019. We were on the beach in the South American country, so this is the Pacific Ocean, and we'll let it play now. Now already at this point in time, the moon has positioned itself, so it's covering most of the sun, and now we're emerging right now to the moment of totality. The moon is directly in front of the sun. Only the light from the corona of the sun is reaching the Earth. You can see it. It's, it's dark here, it's like sort of twilight. But we can't see the, the moon just yet. So we can't see, there's still enough light here that for this uh, video camera uh, is detecting. We can't see the disk of the moon, but when we zoom in, we'll see the moon. And there it is. So this moment of totality lasted for about two minutes and ten seconds at our particular location and then the moon will continue its journey and uncover the Sun again so this is real-time video footage And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and at just that moment we see here the moon is moving so that now a bit of the sun can peek out and we have the end of totality. So it really is a lucky coincidence that the moon happens to be of the right size and the right distance from Earth so that the moon will block the sun and we just get to see the corona of the sun during a total eclipse, a solar eclipse. And here's just one of the shots uh, that uh, from the beach that day. Now we'll take a look at a time lapse. So here's a time lapse of a series of photographs played back as a video. Take a look at that again totality now and then the moon continues on its journey to summarize then we live on a planet called earth it's got a satellite the moon it's in orbit around our Sun and sometimes the arrangement of these bodies provide for beautiful spectacles